Sure, no problem. Alright. Uh, Dr. Azida, saya saya ada share link. Uh, uh, ulang Dr. Raina, tak dengar. Share link. Oh, okay. Saya ada share link, um, apa link Telegram. So kalau peserta boleh join uh, the Telegram group whilst we're waiting for everybody else, uh, that would be great. Okay. So, uh, mohon ya peserta. Uh, Dr. Rahana uh, ada share chat dekat chat for joining a Telegram group. So, uh, please do join the Telegram group before uh, others uh, join the session, ya. Yeah? Saya pun join lah. Okay, I think right now lah, pada pukul 9. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, the CDA East um, uh, session. Yeah? Uh, today we have uh, Prof. Madia Dr. Raihana Muhammad Maidi uh, from UKM. So, uh, I am Azida from the Center for Development of Academy Excellence USM. So, uh, so I think that uh, we have actually uh, uh, do the training for a few times. Okay, every week, every week we have uh, a session. Okay, yesterday we had a session with uh, Associate Professor Dr. Aisha Saad. Okay, and today we have uh, Professor Madia, Dr. Rahana. Uh, on the title of the Art of Journaling for Educators, all right, this is the part one, okay, which is the Science and Art of Journaling for Educators. Uh, so, uh, we will have be having this session from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. today. So, before I start, before uh, I, I uh, uh, please uh, allow me to introduce Dr. Rahana. Okay, Dr. Rahana is an associate professor of literature at the Faculty of so Social Science and Humanities, UKM. She is also a deputy director at the Center of Teaching and Curriculum Development at University Kebangsaan Malaysia. She has over 25 years of teaching experience and she was a recipient of undergrad academic negara in 2014 for teaching excellence all right so without further ado i would like to invite associate professor dr rahana to start the session uh, uh dr rahana the screen is yours Are you up? Okay. Yes. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Very good morning. Uh, thank you so much to um, uh, Prof. Karim, uh, CDAE, and uh, everybody uh, at, at the team uh, for this invitation. Um, I would like to uh, say that today's session is based on my own personal um, passion. Um, it's not my area of uh, research and not my area of studies, but it is very much my own personal passion. So I hope you will indulge me uh, this, this um, hour. Hopefully we will spend about an hour uh, together. Uh, we have three parts. Uh, so for today's uh, session, we are looking primarily on the science and art of journaling for educators. 
So journaling in this context, you know, just the operational definition for the researchers out there, we're not looking at uh, high impact journals. We're looking at a personal journal, right? Um, and how journaling can actually help us um, sharpen our passion and interest and, and quote unquote, Stephen Covey, sharpen our soul. Um, before that, if you could, uh, please join me on our Telegram um, link. I have already shared that with you on uh, the chat. So, um, Dr. Azida, if you could, if uh, remind the participants uh, through chat to get them to join um, the Telegram. Okay, so let's go straight into it. Let's begin with a proposition. Okay, so my proposition is that as educators, all of us, we need to continuously do three things. Beyond being a subject matter expert, we need to do these three things. We need to learn, we need to think, and we need to write in order to develop our craft. I'm talking about our craft as teachers of our subject matter, you know? So that's the focus of our session today. So I'm going to be focusing on how and why we need to learn to continuously learn, think, and write in order to sharpen our craft. And I'll start with uh, something that John Dewey once said. Uh, he's a, an American philosopher, um, psychologist, and education uh, reformer. We don't learn from experience, but we learn from reflecting or reflection on the experience. I like that idea of learning is not a matter of just understanding knowledge, but it's about reflecting on the knowledge that you have been taught. And in, in the context of teachers, how do we do that? How do we reflect on the teaching that we have done in order for learning to happen? So first thing to think about, so I'm going to be getting you to do a lot of these things. So that's why the Telegram group is there. So if I would get you to go to your Telegram group, and do something for me. This is the time to think. Think of a stressful moment in your profession, in your teaching profession for the last, uh, these last 12 months. You know, we've, we've gone through pandemic, you know, uh, we haven't gone through it, we're still in it, I think, right? So think about one stressful moment that best captures the kind of challenge that you felt as an educator, okay? So I'm hoping that, because I can't see your faces, obviously. So I'm hoping that um, you, have, you have that in mind, uh, not in your personal life, but more in your professional life, in your career. Think about that, okay? I hope you have that in your mind. Now what I want you to do is time to write. Capture that moment in writing. Spend two minutes, okay? Just write your thoughts, spend two minutes writing. And when you're ready, just post it on our Telegram uh, group. I'll give you two minutes starting now. You have one more minute. So the task is think of one stressful moment in your uh, profession these last 12 months, you know, 
um, and capture that in writing. Spend two minutes, capture that in writing. Once you have that, post it on your Telegram uh, channel. See a lot of people writing. I can see them, you know, in, in the uh, Telegram channel. We're seeing as a few more people just joined, so I'm going to give you all another another minute, but try to capture the gist of the stressful moment that you experienced this last 12 months in your profession as an educator. Okay, uh, Maria just posted something. So can I get everyone else to post uh, whatever it is that you have written, just post it on our uh, Ahmad uh, Sufril, um, just posted something. I feel you Ahmad, holding administrative posts and, and having to teach. Brilliant. So I'm going to give you one minute to just post whatever it is that you have written. Brilliant, right? Just just wrap up, just post whatever you have um, and, and start looking at each other's challenges and some of the things that your friends are posting. Um, getting everyone, um, you, USM lecturers to go on board teaching and learning. Dr. Azira, I feel you. Um, okay, so here we, we're gonna go, we're gonna go on with this is just the start of the session. Um, so we're going to go on changing lab based teaching to online. Yes. Uh, uh, Chong, I, I'm, your, I'm calling you by your first name. Just call me Raihana as well. So, so we cut all the titles. Um, all right. Brilliant. So, so that was the stressful moment. Another thing to think about, time to think again. Think of one joyful moment in your profession, you know, in your, uh, in your career as an educator these last uh, 12 months. It has to be a joyful moment, you know. If you have to dig deep for it, go forth and dig deep. Look for one joyful moment. There must be some silver lining some opportunity that developed because of the challenge that we face. Look at your own challenges, the one that you posted. There must be one um, joyful moment that came out of that. All right, think about that. Do the same thing. Capture that moment, that joyful moment in writing and post it on our Telegram channel. 
So now we're looking at a joyful moment. You know, you, you, it's easy for our brain to, uh, uh, to focus more on the challenges because they're more real, right? But sometimes you feel as if um, there isn't any silver lining in this context. But if you dig deep enough and kind of challenge yourself to inquire, perhaps you may be able to find one or two. So I would like you to find that, that joyful moment that you experience as an educator these last um, 12 months. All right, uh, Zahira, when my participants appreciate learnings they gain, when they thank me personally for making them see things in different light. Brilliant, yeah. And why? Learning new skills and knowledge in teaching. Brilliant. My, uh, Sarah, I've, uh, I feel you too. My life has been so isolating that meeting students online is such a joyful moment for me. I, I completely agree with you there. Share, share your joyful moments with us. Yeah, Angelina, it is a joyful moment when students are able to translate our teaching into successful projects. I completely agree. I see a friend. Um, Tara, a joyful moment for me is when I see students in my online class socializing by themselves in the class chat they're able to gel together online. It must have been more comfortable than in my online class. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, uh, they are that generation, aren't they? Okay, another minute just to capture your joyful moment these last 12 months uh, as an educator. Brilliant, Ahmad. Um, my joyful moment is when underachieving students are able to understand and do better in my class. Right? They surprise us um, you know, in the unexpected ways. Okay, the last 30 seconds, if you can just post whatever you, you can capture in your mind. All right, brilliant. Um, so time to reflect now. So out of the two, which was easier to, to reflect on? Which felt better to reflect about? Um, which helped you in your career? So think about those two scenarios. You have very stressful moment, then you have a very joyful mo moment. Which felt better to reflect upon, to relive? Right, so I, I managed to get you to relive those moments, especially the painful ones, which is no fun, right? But which felt better and which, which appears to have helped you in your career as an educator? Think about that. If you can just post that on our Telegram. Yeah, the positive one sure feels better, right? But which one seemed to have helped you in your career? Zahira says the positive experience. What about the rest? No responses? Just another, another few seconds. Good. 
Look at the reflection some of your friends are, are saying on the Telegram channel, okay? The negative experience helps me to improve my skills. That's a silver lining. Two things, my negative experience taught me to plan my time better so that I won't be overwhelmed, right? So it's a teaching moment in a sense, right? Yeah, Sarah. Yeah, the negative ones tend to help us be more reflective. Okay, right, just, just finish up your, your final thoughts um, on the Telegram uh, channel. So I'm going to do that throughout this hour session with, with you, okay? Uh, I, because I think, you know, it's, it's no fun for me just to talk and, and present my ideas. It's important for us to both be on the same journey, learning together, because we are all educators, you know, there is no... Um, uh, no one has the upper hand in that sense because we we have we each have our own experiences with our learners, and we have a particular um, interests in terms of our profession. So we're going to just go through this and learn this together. Okay. Hello. Hi there. Okay. So in this session. You know, this is what I want to do. This is an important quote, an important reflection. Life is a series of highs and lows, an adventure that requires you to take chances and actions that have the possibility of both uh, success, i.e. happiness, and failure, i.e. sadness. So it is important, I think, all of us, it's, it's valuable for us to recollect both the highs and the lows in our career, in our teaching profession. So let's explore that in this next uh, 40 minutes or so. So, so a book uh, that I have uh, constantly come back to, which is, you know, which is a classic, I think, is Stephen Covey's uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So the, you know, out of the seven habits, I'm looking at uh, habit number seven, sharpen the saw. So that's, that's my focus for today's session uh, with you. So time to think again, as an educator, how do you sharpen your quote unquote saw? How do you uh, work on improving your craft as an educator? What, what are some of the things that you feel you do in order to sharpen your saw? Think about that and post it on our Telegram channel again. So how do you, what have you done, you think? Just go back to these last 12 months. What have you done to you know, hone in on your craft as an educator? What have you done to sharpen your saw? Taking up um, Stephen Covey's uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Right? Be proactive, begin with the end in mind, put first things first, think win-win, seek first to understand then to be understood, synergize, sharpen the saw. So for, the, for today's session, we're focusing on how we as educators can sharpen the saw. Our craft is, um, uh, requires us to be both the tool and the resource um, in, in order to kind of create teaching in our, uh, in, with our students in our classroom. So the question that I want you to think about is as an educator, these last 12 months, what are some of the things you yourself have done to sharpen your soul? Talking to others, uh, my Sarah, talking to others, colleagues really helped in general. Brilliant. Um, taking a few certification programs to improve my skills as an educator. Okay. Uh, this is a shout out to uh, CDAE. I learned a lot from CDAE. So CDAE, you all are doing something brilliant. Um, what else? What else have you done to sharpen the saw? Let's just spend another minute on this. 
I am sure you have been doing a lot, but I think some of the times you forget to acknowledge that these are some of the things I've been doing to help me improve myself as an educator. So, so what are some of the things that you have been doing um, to, you know, despite the, the hectic of, of teaching online, uh, administrating online, researching and supervising students online, what are some of the things that you have been doing that has helped you on retrospect, as you re reflect back on these last 12 months, has helped you sharpen the saw. Good, my Sarah, reflecting on other online classes that I have attended, yeah. Seeing how, seeing how others are, are doing it and then um, you know, coming back to your own session, your own, your own classes, good. So yeah, um, uh, Dr. Tahara has, has a good point here. Chatting with students who are more vocal and approachable and getting their personal feedback on class and what they, have, uh, what they want to do, uh, to do to learn better. Basically, it's like using students as our needs analysis, right? Uh, getting ideas from them and then using those ideas and, and feeding it back into our teaching. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that that's a good idea. There's a few more people who have joined us. For those who have joined us, um, I'm, I'm asking this question uh, based on Stephen Covey's um, classic uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective uh, People. Out of the seven habits, we're focusing on habit number seven, the last habit, sharpen the soul. So the question I'm asking is, as educators, how do you sharpen your soul? How do you... Um, you know, strengthen yourself and your craft. So there's quite a few people who've just joined us. Um, please join us uh, also on our Telegram channel. Uh, the link is uh, in the chat. You know, take a look at what um, uh, Ahmad says, Dr. Ahmad says, um, I will take a short break and spend time with family and reorganize the tasks when I'm already in a calm state. Yeah, I think sharpening your saw sometimes require coming back, as, as we will talk about today, checking in with yourself. You know, come back to yourself, checking, check in with yourself. How am I doing? Is everything okay? You know, be more calm and think more clearly that way. I, I, I like that. What else? Maybe a couple more if, if, if a few of you want to participate. What have you done? And, and you know, I'm, I'm sure you've done a lot that you didn't realize. Uh, Dr. Uma is also here. Uh, welcome. So what have you done to sharpen your soul? Okay, another 30 seconds before we move on. Okay, nobody else wants to post anything. All right. Okay, so, you know, this is something to think about. So when we talk about habit number seven, sharpen the, the saw, think about the, when, when we think about this idea of sharpening the saw, not necessarily in the context of our ourself as an educator. So the idea of sharpening the saw means you seek continuous improvement and renewal both professionally and personally. So there are many, uh, many areas. This is from the website, uh, uh, you know, for those of you who are interested to know more, the, the links are there and I will make the PowerPoint slide available also on our Telegram channel later. So you can think about it in, in four different uh, areas of your life, physical, social, emotional, um, psychological or mental and spiritual. So as an educator, which areas of your life did you neglect, you think? this last 12 months, you know? So when we, when we talk about sharpening our soul, we need to develop ourselves holistically, both 
you know, the physical uh, domain as well as the, the emotional, psychological, and, and spiritual domains of our person, of our individual, right? Uh, of course, you have, you know, eating healthy, resting, you know, one of the things that the, the COVID has done was to uh, inhibit our movement, our physical movement, because you only have this square feet, whatever square feet you are blessed with to move around in, right? So that's one of the issues that, you know, some of us um, suffered from, like, you, you just have to keep walking back and forth inside your house, in your, your place of residence. So physical movement may be something that you neglect. Um, what else did you feel that, you know, on retrospect, you know what, you know, I've been focusing on my class, on my students, on learning new traits and skills and administrative work and the paperwork and the training of our staff and all the rest of it. But which area of my life did I not handle? Did I not take care of these last 12 months? So think about that. So family and, and health. So a lot of you are saying family, family and health, okay? So let's have a look at ways in which we as educators could quote unquote sharpen our saw. Um, and then we'll focus on the fourth one. So, you know, when we think about sharpening our saw as an educator, you have to kind of begin with small things and start to look at how can I improve things incrementally? Start with small things and then build up from that. And begin immediately. You don't wait to sharpen your saw. You don't wait. You say, okay, wait until I've done my first 10 years of career or first five years or wait until I've gotten my promotion or whatever. You need to begin immediately. Uh, you need to see learning also as a system. You're, you're part of a system and you're, you're progressing, you know, slowly. Number four, reflect, reflect, reflect. We'll come back to that in a minute. Number five, ways that you can sharpen your saw, you collaborate with others meaningfully. Number six, as one of our, our friends have said just now, listen to your students, get, from, get thoughts and feedbacks from your students and ask them what's working and what's not and do more of what's working and less of what's not. Stay curious, right? Learn from others, have questions, be inquisitive and celebrate the art of learning both in yourself as a as a ongoing lifelong learner, as well as in your student. So for, for today, um, and in the next two sessions, if you're with me, I just want to focus on number four, you know, how we as educators can sharpen our saw through the art of reflecting. Okay. So another time to write. Um, on my, this is a this is a statement. On my best day with my class, let me just remove this. On my best day with my class, what did I do to help my students learn? So this is more specific, not the most stressful moment, not the most joyful moment, but think about one session that you had these last twelve months, if you like. On my best day with my students, what did I do? to help my students learn? What was the one thing that I did? What was the unique thing that I did that facilitate learning to happen? Did you tell a joke? Did you begin by asking them something, you know, or did you begin by saying something witty and funny? What, what you, do you think facilitated learning? Because we are all in this together, the students on their end, you know, in front of the screen and you on your end in front of your screen, like exactly like what we are doing now, right? I'm here in USJ uh, Subang Jaya and you are, some of you are in Malacca, some of you are in um, Batuworth, some of you are in Penang Island, you know, you are, you're scattered everywhere. Um, so, so. How do you make learning work? So on my best day with my class, what did I do to help my students learn? Think about that. Just post something. What do you think you did that was successful? 
time to reflect. What did you think? Uh, what do you think you did that was successful in helping your students learn? And why? Great. Telling story to relate with teaching. Brilliant. I, I'm from the literature department. So storytelling is, is huge in our, in our program. So I agree with you. Zahira, thank you. Yeah, I put myself in their shoes to understand their needs and coach them one-on-one. -on -one. They loved it. High five to you. So a simple statement, my Sarah, a simple statement. I just tell them I'm here to help. Please ask me anything, right? To be kind of, you know, to be there, to open yourself for, for that kind of a service for them. Brilliant. Good. Provide a Z10Z. Uh, provide them systematic and digestible chunk of lessons less is more i agree as lena always tell my students that they're doing great and always believe that they can be successful just those simple coaching simple kind of affirmations you know um uh yeah i completely agree with you aman uh, think human don't think no i think human don't like to think and so any type of motivations to think which is suitable to their level can be used to motivate them. I absolutely agree with you. This, this you know, uh, six pound um, uh, muscle that you have in your in your head actually can be used to your advantage. Learn and relearn, Maria. Yes, uh, Dahara, uh, relating the lesson to their personal life. Um, absolutely, because whatever you're learning, it shouldn't be uh, the end goal. The learning is a means to an end, right? Brilliant. Last thoughts? Um, Anissa, welcome. Ahmad, yes. Um, sometimes being like a friend to them would help to motivate them. Yeah, just be available um, in order to kind of motivate them. Agreed. So, you know, time to reflect on that. And I think you have, let's deconstruct what you have written, okay? So if you look at some of the things you and others have written in our Telegram group, what insights can you get from reflecting on your teaching? What teachable moments did you receive from your students? What moments of mastery did you recall? Some of you, you know, you incorporated these things. So what I'm asking you to do is by looking through the things that we have written together as a collectively, the, the 30 odd of us, once you deconstruct that, you are able to see awesome things about yourself in the way you sharpen your saw, the insights that you get, the teachable moments for yourself, not for your students, the teachable moments for yourself that you receive from your students, as well as the moments of mastery that you never thought you had it in you, had we not gone through this last you know, 12 months of, of um, online, complete online teaching, okay? So uh, when we talk about reflecting, there's two things that you need to think about. One is to recall what happened, but the second component is more important. And this is the second component where you deconstruct, you look at what you have written and you reflect on what you yourself have written. And you look at the themes, you know, the patterns that's emerging, the patterns that's emerging based on your own re uh, reflection of your uh, uh, craft as an educator. So when we talk about deconstructing um, your writing, it is something that we all do, but sometimes we don't recognize that we're doing this. So that's what that's what this uh, bit is uh, about when we de deconstruct our writing. You're checking in with yourself. 
or another term for it is you are developing a process called self-regulation. So self-regulation, and I'm, I'm quoting this from Peter Holland's book, Think Like Einstein. It's a, it's a nice, easy read, you know, it, it's a very quick read. So, so I highly encourage you to try to get hold of the book. But uh, the bits that I'm focusing on come specifically from chapter two. So if, if there's any one chapter that you want to focus on, I would say chapter two for sure. So there's two important quotes uh, about self-regulation, and I'm going to link self-regulation with the art of self-reflection in end journaling. Okay, so self-regulation, and I quote, the ability to think about your own thinking. It's to take a step outside your own head and determine if you are comprehending or thinking about something effectively. Sometimes you look at the last 12 months and you lump it all up as it was stressful. It was, it was unthinkable. It was challenging. It was, you know, you lump it all as one collective, right? But the, the ability, the art of self-regulation requires you to step outside of that and look at the whole thing and unpack what were the highs, what were the lows, what were the level uh, um, of mastery that I developed? What were some teachable moments that I also developed from my students, right? So when you start to unpack all that, you are developing self-regulation. Now, self-regulation also, as Holland goes on to say, quote, requires a certain amount of self-awareness to see that the status quo or current approach isn't working and that another one could perhaps be much better. It also continually asks if you are seeing, uh, seeking the big picture or missing important elements. Now, the truth is you cannot do all that. You cannot be self-aware and self-regulate if you don't reflect, right? So back to what we said earlier, the art of sharpening the saw for an educator, besides attending class, besides collaborating and learning and, and listening to our students, is to reflect on what we have learned, right? So back to what uh, uh, John Dewey said at the beginning, you don't learn from um, experience, you learn from reflecting on that experience. So when we talk about journaling for educators, this is basically what we're looking at. We're looking at developing the art of self-regulation. And no matter what level of, of teaching career you are at, and no matter what, which station you are at, and whereabouts you're teaching, be it high school or college or university, or whether you're supervising uh, PhD students, it doesn't matter. We all need to do this. Now, another bit that I want to kind of uh, inject into this discussion is to kind of help you make the link between self-regulation as a skill and intelligence. So think about this, which of Howard Gardner's uh, theory of multiple intelligence focuses on self-regulation? It's pretty straightforward, but it would be nice for you to try, try to guess uh, all the same. Which one do you think it is? So, so which of Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence, and, and those are listed there, visual, spatial, spatial, linguistic, verbal, interpersonal, intrapersonal, logical, mathematical, musical, uh, kinesthetic, bodily kinesthetic, and naturalist. So which one is about self-regulation? Which one do you think? Anybody wants to try to guess on our Telegram group? I see Zahira's typing. Interpersonal. It doesn't sound very confident, though, Zahira. With that question mark, it's like, hmm, am I, am I right? Am I wrong? You know, a little bit more confidence. I, I would like to hear a little bit more confidence when we say something like, I think this is it. Anissa says, interpersonal, definitely. There you go. The definitive statement there. So which one do you think focuses on self-regulation? <laughs> intrapersonal, 200%. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, good. Yes, intrapersonal. Intrapersonal is looking at the self. Interpersonal is looking at yourself with others. 
So it is the intrapersonal intelligence that, that focuses on your ability to self-regulate, to be self-aware, to be more reflective. So let's look at the definition of intrapersonal intelligence. What does it mean? And this is, this is from Harlins' uh, work. And I quote, that you think about your own actions and thoughts. Let's see this. All right. That you think about your own actions and thoughts a lot. You have a high amount of self-awareness. And with that comes the ability to self-regulate actions and thoughts. There you go. So you are reflecting on your actions and your thoughts. That's what intrapersonal intelligence mean. Okay. Now, maybe we have not been developing that part of our intelligence. Right. And maybe some of us have it more than others. Right. So this is the time to kind of like hone in on this, this intelligence. And, and expanding on that, Hollins also, also goes on to say that intrapersonal intelligence means you have an acute and mostly objective sense of self and ability. Objective, you don't look at yourself as I'm a loser, I can't do this, or I suck at this. You know, I wish I could be a better teacher. I wish I, I, wish I could be a teacher like that person or that person. Right, but you have an objective sense of yourself. You look at yourself not in a subjective way, but in an objective way. Your highs, your lows, your strengths, your opportunities, the bits that you need to improve on, the bits that you have reached a level of mastery. So you're you're able to be objective with yourself. Okay, you truly know yourself better than anyone else, and you have few, if any, blind spots. So taking up on this idea of blind spots, I'm sure a lot of you um, are familiar with Johari Window. This is developed by Joseph, by two psychologists, um, uh, Joseph uh, Luth and Henry Ing uh, Harry Ingram um, in 1950s. Uh, it's called Johari Window. It's the idea of um, uh, individuals, uh, there are sections in our identity, in our sense of self, in which, you know, it's either known uh, to self and others, that's the first, the green square, or um, uh, known to yourself, but hidden from others, i.e. your secrets, yeah? That's your hidden self. And then there are other parts that others seem to notice about you, but you don't notice that about yourself, right? That's the blind part of yourself, that blind spot. And then there are, there, there's another uh, square where you don't know enough of yourself and others don't know enough of, of you either. You know, so that's, that's the unknown, maybe the subconscious side of you. So the idea of uh, interpersonal intelligence is to kind of uh, make that yellow box smaller, the blind self, right? Bits that you don't realize about yourself. Um, you know, maybe... Uh, when you talk in your class, you tend to say okay a lot, uh, or you tend to um, you, you tend to say certain certain fillers. You know, maybe there are there are things that you do that that you don't realize. So inter uh, intrapersonal intelligence requires you to reflect on this and um, develop a mastery over it. Right, so helps you uncover um, the blind spots. So, you know, I'm, I'm coming to the end of our session um, to become a reflective educator through journaling. This is something William uh, Zinner uh, says, you know, in his book, Writing to Learn. It's another brilliant, uh, very light reading, if you're interested. Uh, we write to find out what we know and what we want to say. Um, I like the idea that, you know, writing is not just about um, high impact publications. It's not just about capturing your research, but it is also to find out what we know. Sometimes we think we don't know about it. And then when we're writing about that topic, we realize that actually I do know some stuff about it. So journaling is the best way to do this because you are reflecting on your own craft as an educator. So what do you know about your craft as an educator? What do you know about your ability to teach, your ability to engage with your learners? So when you are able to um, write it down, you are able to articulate to yourself and then develop your intrapersonal intelligence, develop your self-regulation skills, self-awareness and, and all that. 
sorry, uh, what is it about? Not the blind self uh, as blind self as in I am not quite sure. Intrapersonal uh, helps us develop mastery of the blind self. You know, remember when I said um, self-regulation, one of the one of the values of self-regulation is, you know, the second quote, you truly know yourself better than anyone else. And you have few, if any, blind spots. You know, when you're driving, you know, you look at your side mirror, sometimes you, there are blind spots that you don't catch, right? There are there are sections uh, between your car and, and, and the road and the car behind you that you don't see. And when there is a motorbike passing by, the motorbike might, might occupy the blind spots that you can't see the motorbike very, very well. So with ourselves, that's an analogy. So with ourselves, there might be some parts of our teaching uh, uh, that, that we don't realize. For instance, do you tend to pick on the, the naughty students more than the, the good students? Do you tend to pick on the girls more than the guys? Do you tend to pick on a certain demographics more than others? So you might not realize this, but maybe you've recorded the session in class. You use Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Meet. Then, then you're maybe reviewing it one time and you realize that you've been calling on that one student a lot of times. Is it because that one student is a bit of a clown in the class or is that one student, a, you know, one of your you know, good students, the, the top students, the top 1%. So the blind self is the areas in your, in your uh, personality, in your uh, approach to yourself that you don't realize, that you didn't know about until somebody else points it out to you, right? But through reflection, you are able to discover this for yourself as well. Why? Because you are seeing yourself, as it says here, you have an acute and mostly objective sense of self and ability. So if you tend to pick on a particular student more than others, you have to be honest with yourself. When you're reflecting about it, you must say, you know, this is, this is what I'm doing. I tend to pick on, on uh, these students more than others. So in my next class, I'm going to try my best to be more comprehensive. I'm going to kind of try to include others into the discussion, not just those few who like to talk or not, the, not just those few who like to crack jokes, right? Or who like to kind of clown about, uh, you know what I mean? So that, that's what I mean. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Keep asking questions because, because um, you know, this is, this is awesome. So I want you to kind of think about this idea as well. Um, the quality of, of your life is a direct reflection of the quality of questions you are asking yourself. So I'm building on various ideas, right? We had, uh, we had self, uh, we had intrapersonal um, uh, skills and you have self-regulation and sorry, we had self-regulation and intrapersonal intelligence and then you know, the idea of reflecting as part of, of our teaching. I am building on many, many uh, concepts. I hope, I hope you see the big picture. Um, but you may ask yourself, okay, fine, reflection, you know, doing reflecting um, exercise or, or reflecting uh, journaling is important. How do I do that? How do I begin to reflect? So one of the things that, that I like um, is this idea of you begin by asking yourself lots of questions, right? So this is something uh, Tony Robbins, uh, the self-help guru um, says, the quality of your life is a direct reflection of the quality of questions that you are asking yourself. Simple question, uh, simple question like, how am I doing? Am I on the right path? Am I am I doing enough? Am I I'm, am I reaching to my level of potential? So these are questions that that I could ask myself, right? What are some questions that, as educators, we can ask about our teaching? So what kind of questions can we ask ourselves, and can our friends ask themselves about their teaching, right? 
uh, that can help with the process of reflecting. So think, think about this. What questions can you ask yourself about your teaching? Post that on our Telegram uh, channel. What questions can you ask yourself about your class? So what questions can I ask myself about this session that I have conducted at the end of the day when I'm reflecting back on this session? Right? A simple question was would be, was using the Telegram channel a good idea? Because this is the first time I'm actually experimenting with using Telegram for a webinar, you know, because usually the mobile uh, groups, we tend to use it for our classroom purposes, right? Uh, so, so this is the first time I'm doing a training session and I'm not meeting any one of you. I can't see any of your faces except for the few. I know Maria, I know Tara, I know Dr. Azida. The rest of you I, I'm not too familiar with. But is this a good idea? So that, that will be a question that I'm going to reflect on tonight. You know, was using the telegram uh, as, as a means to communicate with you? Was that a good idea? So what other questions do you think you... Uh, and, and I could be asking ourselves about our teaching that we can use as part of our reflective exercise. What if I'm wrong? Do I know enough? Oh my God, I feel you. Yeah, you know, that sense of insecurity, right? Do I know enough? Like even preparing for this session when Prof Karim invited me, I'm like, I've been doing this for the last 20 plus years and, and, and journaling is part of my own, uh, my own journey. But in my, yeah, exactly. Do I know enough? You know, so what else uh, can I do to improve my teaching? Yeah. Have I been approachable all this while? Do they want to ask me or stay away from me? Oh. Feel you. What else? What else? Come on. Do they believe whatever concepts I put forward? I hope this is not a reflection of the current class. <laughs> Look at their skeptical faces. I can't see any skeptical faces right now, Zahira. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just being cheeky. Were my students bored? Was I too monotonous? Oh. Feel you, I feel you. Do I man did did I manage to cover the course uh, the the learning outcome promised to the students? That's that's something I'm constantly grappling with. Yeah, spend another minute. We're almost done. Uh, we will we'll end soon. Spend another minute or two. Um, you know what kind of questions that that you feel need to be asked of every educator, including yourself, in order for us to truly reflect. I, I'm a huge believer of, you know, you need to evaluate yourself before somebody evaluates you. You need to kind of quote unquote judge yourself before you are judged, you know? You need to assess yourself before others assess you. You don't wait for somebody to say you're good or you're an excellent, uh, educator or you need work on this and that so I, I feel like we all need to evaluate ourselves in, in no matter what we do whatever whatever station in life we're at you know Ahmad yeah I, I hear you am I up to the standard as, as other uh, educators um, there is a place uh, for comparison and there is a place for for um, more introspective evaluation so I, I hear what you're saying Anissa, did I convey the take-home message from each and every class session? Yeah. Is my teaching method effective? Do they understand the concepts? Right? Okay. So... Yeah, keep keep writing. I, I see people writing, so I'm 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 gonna give you all time for that. We're almost done, everybody. So um, if you're waiting to go elsewhere or, or make yourself the morning coffee, we, we're nearly done.
So it's been it's been a, a very very interesting um, um, reflection because a lot of the things that you are saying are things that I feel myself. So it's nice to know that these questions I'm asking are questions that others are also asking. Do they see the time they spend in my class as worthwhile? Yeah. You know, I hope we're not projecting our insecurities, you know, um, like, do they lose three hours with me or did they gain knowledge by being with me for three hours? Like the same, you know, I'm asking the same thing. Uh, this last hour, did you all lose one hour with me or did, did we all gain something from this experience? So yeah, these are questions we are also um, asking. So I'm going to let Fizran, sorry, Firuzan uh, finish up. Can they learn the same thing better elsewhere in YouTube? Oh. My heart goes out to all of you because I think I think we are all uh, a community of practitioners feeling the same the same challenge, you know. So yeah. So I'm going to end with this. This is the homework. Um, choose any of these questions that that uh, you have posted or others have posted and write about it in your journal. Try to make it into a habit. You know, first you make your habit and then your habit makes you. So, so what kind of things that you want to build into your daily repertoire, make it into a habit, make it, take the action, and then slowly the action becomes and defines you. So one action that I would like you to kind of make into a habit is journaling about your teaching specifically about the things that you do with your students, your classwork and all that. So choose one question and write about it. So these are three questions that, that I include with the list that you have shared in the Telegram. What did I do today to help me move closer to excellence as an educator? So um, you know, one of you said just now about comparing yourself to an, another educator. So I've not been, been uh, that's not been a high priority for me. How others are doing is, is based on their strengths and their capabilities, right? Uh, I'm always looking at how am I capable uh, and, and how high have I reached in terms of my level of capability. So my question for myself would be, what did I do today to help me move closer to excellence as an educator? So my level of excellence is here. Somebody else's may be there. Mine is there. And I'm like, have I moved to that level? Another question is, what acts of excellence did I witness today? Sometimes it's coming from you, but sometimes it may be coming from others. So the, the, the things that you all have shared in your Telegram group have given me the, the acts of excellence that I can uh, then incorporate into my life. So sometimes you are a witness of acts of excellence, and sometimes you are part of the act of excellence, you know, you demonstrate excellence in, in your, uh, through your action. So that's another question I would ask. A third one would be, how have my students taught me to be a better teacher today? Because I'm always mindful that the last 25 years, I have reached any level of excellence because of the learners that have come and gone from my, my class. They have taught me to be a better teacher. They are, the things that they have challenged me with is the things that they are experiencing and challenged with, right? Maybe they can't understand how to unpack the particular passage and I'm having to talk, teach them, talk them through it. And in doing that, I live, I, I'm, uh, my level of excellence goes higher. It's because of them, do you know what I mean? So, so take any one of these questions or any other questions every day, take another question and journal about it. And if you're going to join us um, next week, bring your journal along and, and take it uh, the next step. Okay, so uh, just a, a short take home message uh, to, to finally conclude um, our session. Um, so, you know, let's all begin uh, reflecting by, by having a reflective journal. So as educators, we need to continuously learn, think and write in order to develop our craft. I started with that proposition right, that we need to continuously learn, think and write in order to develop ourselves as educators. And I feel that um, I feel that I have made my case in this one hour with you. 
that we do need to continuously learn, think and write. And I think you have demonstrated that yourself in this hour with me, uh, that you are thinking uh, and writing and, and learning from each other, from the community of practitioners that we've developed in our Telegram group. And I'd like to challenge us to continuously do that through uh, reflective journaling. And with that, I end my session. Thank you very much. Dr. Azida, back to you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Raihana. All right. Uh, All right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Raihana, for the uh, session. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending the session. All right, you have um, some homework to do. Okay. Hope I hope that you are going to join us next week with the part two of the art of journaling for educators. So next week we are going to have building habits of excellence, uh, micro habits of professional journaling. Okay, uh, on Monday, right? On Monday, I think of April. So do join us for uh, our next session on this topic. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Rahana. So. Um, for the very uh, for the excellent session hoping that we are going to see you next week inshallah all right inshallah. so for all the participants please do uh kindly fill up the following feedback form uh for your cpd points all right the link will be active for only 30 minutes all right so uh, thank you very much again for attending do you have any uh question participants i forgot about that any questions from the participants? Do you have any questions to Dr. Rahana? No question? All right, then. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, Dr. Rahana. Hope Thank you. Hope to see you soon. All right, bye-bye. Thank you all.